Hello, we're back on the virus channel. This time for another interview with JD. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too. And the first question is, what's your favorite fast food restaurant? Um, right now, bro, I don't know if this counts, but Jamba, Jamba Juice. Every time I get a pink star, it's like it tastes like a pink starburst. That shit's so fire. I never, Other than that, I don't know. I never even heard of that. Is that like healthy? Yeah, it's healthy. It's like a smoothie place. It's like a shake place. Mm. I don't know if they have it out. Uh, and where are you from? Uh, Sorry. The England, UK. Nice, 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 nice. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they have it. Uh, we probably have some terrible variation of it, but uh, okay. So we're just gonna jump in with it. I don't know too much about the situation. I read what you posted, and I just want to let you now tell, fully tell your story, and then maybe I'll ask some questions off of what you say. Yeah, please jump in whenever you feel like. But uh, I guess long story long, I used to have a friend named Ari. And, like we used to be close, and like we would hang out and whatever. Mostly, like, mostly in groups, you know, never even really alone. But uh, we used to have a big group. She used to date this other girl that I was friends with named Ori or other person. Uh, and they just were like, they were just together for a little bit. But it, basically me and Ori had a fallout. And um, it was a very, it was a very weird fallout, honestly. It was over like it, her or they and my friend dated and then they thought that when they split up like I was on my friend's side or whatever but I really just didn't give too much about either of the situations you know just like uh I just that's something I ever wanted to put my foot in but somehow I still got dragged in the middle of it so me and Ori fell out uh long story short then not too long after I hear like some allegations pop up of like me and Ariana doing like things while uh I'd given them drugs or given her drugs or whatever the fuck and I just like you know, I didn't believe it at first. I didn't want to believe that it was the per that it was coming from the person at first. Mm -hmm. So I was like, um, so I kind of reached out and I texted them. I was like, yo, like, what's this shit about? Like, what's going on over here? Like, what are they saying? Like, you know, I didn't think they were saying anything about it. I was like, I just wanted to reassure that we were just friends. And like, I never gave off like any other different idea or even something to be interpreted, interpreted out there. So I was like, you know what? I'm, um, I'm going to remove myself from the situation before it gets worse. Thought I was doing the right thing. I just like uh, unfollowed on everything, blocked and everything. And I was just, like, you know, I thought that was going to be the last that I heard of it. Uh, this took place in about December. Fast forward to like January. I'm getting a lot of texts from like my best friend's girlfriend or my old best friend's girlfriend. And just like some some other shit. They're like, yo, like, what did you do with like this girl? Like she's 15, right? So I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm personally, I'm already not fucking with like, I'm not doing anything sexual or even like making any advancements on anybody. That's like 15 or whatever. This is not my thing. Being as I'm about to be 20. So I'm hearing like we had sex or like we I, I got like head from them or like some other shit. Just a whole bunch of things. Either way you put it, it's not true. You know, mm -hmm. so I never had sex with that person under or uh, not under the influence. I never did anything sexual under not under the influence. And uh, it's as simple as that, you know, and mm -hmm. any other way that you spin it, it won't be true. There's they said that I groomed them for like four years. Or like uh was in there like begging for nudes and like begging for all that but just no proof or whatever like because mm. it never happened so it's just uh a lot of a lot of people are just believing off a of hearsay and it seems like the innocent until proven guilty thing is more like guilty until proven innocent i'm trying to find screenshots <laughs> yeah. proving that i didn't have sex with somebody who's proving that or who's saying that i did which is like really backwards i'm like mm -hmm. it's not that's not the way it's supposed to be or whatever but uh I, just, I have bad blood with some people in the scene or whatever, just off of like some old petty beef. So, you know, as soon as, as soon as some pops up, they're going to try to use it to get me out again, which is just mm -hmm. like really unfortunate. So now I'm sitting here defending myself, which I'm a very patient person. I will defend myself because I think like, I don't, I try not to care what people think about me, but I think it's different when it's like a rape case or like something. Yeah. Just such gravity. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'll sit here and I'll defend myself for however long I need to until this shit goes away or even just simmers down. You know, and I really appreciate mm. you giving me the opportunity for being able to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, of course. I feel like, yeah. I feel like you should get to say your piece. That's a good point, because I feel like... I feel like... I'll never care what people think if it's, like, an opinion. But when it's, like, exactly. a false, like, accusation, I yeah. feel like... It's, like, it's like different. Right? Yeah, exactly. Like, if somebody's like, dude, fuck your clothes, or fuck your new song, <laughs> I'll be like, oh, thank you, you know? Yeah. But, like... When it's something like this, everybody's like, yo, I thought you didn't care what people think. I'm like, dude, that's two different, yeah, like, yeah, planes yeah. we're living on right now. Yeah, yeah, thanks. And yeah, thank you. 
Is this, this is IRL people, I'm guessing? This isn't like people you've met through the internet, I'm guessing? No, all IRL people, so that's what makes it a little bit trickier, you know, mm -hmm. trying to figure that out. And um, the internet people, they don't they don't know any like basis of our relationship or whatever, so they just think it's somebody that I was just weird to in the past. And, uh, you know, what can you really do besides prove that you weren't weird to them? And the IRLs, is it are more people siding with them? Or is it kind of uh, like neutral? It's like a, it's like a three thing. You got like you got like the people who are like on my side, like defending me, which I have like a, I have a decent team of those, like my friends and shit. I know like I wouldn't do some shit like that. Then you have the people that are in the middle that just don't want to be involved at all. So usually they like basically unfollowed me or whatever, which is kind of like picking a side. But like it's whatever. I get it. I don't want to be in the middle of it. Why would I want to try to have you in the middle of it? You know. Mm -hmm. So they're unfollowing me or whatever the fuck. And that I also understand. And you got people who are siding with her. And you have a lot siding with her because a lot of people don't have a perception of me. You know, like mm -hmm. this is like the first thing that they're hearing about me ever that I'm just like some super weird fucking rapist or whatever the fuck I'm getting called. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I guess I understand it, but I wish these people could have like a perception of me or understand who I am. You know? And you tweeted about a picture of false information. What what was that picture that people was reposting? Uh, the picture that the girl had put together of uh, she took a picture of me and her and like some other people in a car. But she only took like the part where me you could see me and her and um she posted it and she put like three texts with like instagram text on there just like shit that i had allegedly done to her like got her high <coughs> gave her drugs uh asked for sexual favors groomed her just like the whole shebang you know mm -hmm. and it was just a picture of just like me and her in the car with a whole bunch of texts but there's like no proof because you know it never happened so it's a very um, it's a very weird picture and I think like people in the scene were posting it, like uh, like my friend's girlfriend was posting it, and then like soon and a whole bunch of other hyper pop people that I don't really know. It was hmm. like, yeah. yeah. What do you think their motive was behind saying all that? Um, there as in the person, mm -hmm. or oh yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Well, when me and like the girl that she dated fall out, fell out, it was just like. It's kind of if I have bad blood with the girl that she's falling out with, I have bad blood with her, too, because they are like they're like a fucking pact. And it's kind of hypocritical mm -hmm. also because they were like the girl that her girlfriend is 18 and she's 15. But that's beside the fucking point. But um, mm. yeah, it's just like. It was it's like uh, they're so close or like. If I have if I'm fucking with Ori, which is the older girl, then like. I'm fucking with Ari too. And it's just like, they fight together. It doesn't matter. Mm. And I, I don't really ever, I don't, I don't ever really know like for sure why this shit popped up, honestly. But that's something like the speculation considering it's been happened since January. I've given it like a lot of thought too. So like I've had, a, I've made, I've come to a couple conclusions and I've made a couple guesses. That's actually my next question because it happened in January. Why has it all been brought up again? Like recently? Um, it happened in January and then she just reposted it. Like I have like the screenshots of her, like just being like, this isn't getting enough attention. Mm -hmm. Cause I guess not enough people were attending to it. Mm. At first she just said that like we had had sex, like while we were high. And then she changed it to, I had raped her while she was high, which both didn't mm. happen, but it was, it's very fucked up. Are you still thinking about taking them to court? Yeah, 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 definitely. I, um, there is a notice to appear slip that I'm not sure if it's been sent out or if it's our, or if it's being ready to be sent out. But either way, they'll be getting subpoenaed pretty soon. And it's just like taking the court under defamation of character because like, honestly, I thought I could just forget about it. But this shit's been going on for a minute and I'm trying to like do music and things like that. And this is just not the person that I am. And that being pushed out is kind of fucking with me mentally and whatever. That's fair. Um... I hope respectfully, but the floor is completely yours. Is there anything you'd like to say to people that are no longer your friends because of the situation, whether that be the internet hyperpop or the IRLs, whichever? Yeah, uh, I think what I would say to the people that are no longer my friends is literally just, I understand, you know? Like, I, at first, at first it was, like, more, like, uh, animosity, like, what the fuck? Like, you guys really think I could do some shit like that? But I guess now I can just say that I understand because nobody wants to be in the middle of this shit. I don't want to be in the middle of this shit. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to, you know, uh, but the people that did stick with me or, you know, or were even willing to hear my side of things, I just, 
always am able to say thank you, you know, because a lot of people don't didn't give me that time of the day. So thank you, you know. Yeah, facts. And before we continue with like the rest of the interview, is there anything else you want to say on the situation that maybe I didn't ask or you didn't mention? No, not really. Uh, I think that's the gist of it. I really don't like talking about it, honestly, but it's mm. something I need to. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so how old are you? Where are you from? And what was it like growing up there? I am 19, uh, about to turn 20 in like three months. My birthday's in July. Uh, I'm from California and living, growing up here was a fucking doozy, you know? Uh, I was, I was always like, I was, like as a kid, I was always experiencing being an outcast, you know, which is like kind of generic, but it's fucking true. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. like me being like the white black kid the white black <laughs> kid you know like everybody you got like all you got all my nigga cousins and shit like, uh, like they're all thugs they're all thugs and whatever and shit like that and then you got me who's like walking around listening to fucking lincoln park and lupe fiasco and shit and they're like what the fuck is going on like, yo who even is this nigga bro and then i got like my cousin monte he was like he's my blood cousin like we still talk to this day we play video games and shit like that He's a big inspiration, grown man or whatever. And we was all just like the white cousins. Like we would always just, we'd always be clicked up, like <laughs> listening to whatever, doing the fucking whatever. And um, that shit was always pivotal to like me growing up and like saying what I do in my songs now and moving the way I do now. Because like it taught me that uh, sometimes you don't need to fit in anywhere to have a place to be, you know? Mm. So, doing well, those things. Why is it? Because I think for me personally, like where I grew up, it's like, 95 percent white so like yeah. if to like the average black guy they'd probably think like i'm kind of like white well yeah, what, probably... what why do you think that is for you or that you was perceived like that i have no clue bro maybe <laughs> it was just like maybe it was just like racist shit pushed upon us by white people or like maybe just racism pushed upon us by black people too but it was just mm. like uh it was it, like for me it came the proper way to talk or the clothes that i wore or whatever the fuck like these mm. things like people just thought that they weren't like cr- congruent with black people but like now i'm seeing like a lot more black people breaking out of their shell being able to talk properly and be accepted in the community and shit like that but like mm. back in like 2007 2006 <laughs> niggas was not on that wave yet they weren't fucking with that so i'm just like okay whatever. and you still live in california right now mm-hmm. i've lived uh, here all my life i've been a couple different places do you enjoy living there? Yeah, I love it. It's hot as fuck, though. Hot as hell. Oh. I got LA right below me, so, like, LA is about a five hour drive, which is pretty fun. Mm. I was also just about to ask about the weather. So, like, I'm always intrigued from people from, like, warm places. What degrees is cold to you? For me, bro, I would say cold is like 60. Like, I know it's pretty high, but I would say cold is 60 <laughs> Fahrenheit. Yeah. What's cold to you, though? Uh- Okay, so I've got like a little thing on my phone here that's like telling me what Fahrenheit. We do Celsius, not Fahrenheit. So yeah. like, sixty Fahrenheit is fifteen Celsius, and that's yeah. warm. <laughs> that's God warm. damn! Like, yeah, I'm <laughs> like, dude, sixty is crazy. Cold, is- cold for me is probably like thirty. God damn! Yeah, that's like yeah. that's like snow weather, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Never seen uh, snow, like in person. What? <laughs> yeah, I've never seen snow. Never. <laughs> I guess I guess that makes sense living yeah. in uh, Cali. Have you have you Cali. been to New York before? I've never been in New York. No, mm. I was supposed to go to Sh- Chicago earlier this year, but I need to. I need to go to New York. Mm. I'm interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I was gonna ask you what you thought of the weather there because that's, that's colder than here in New York. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, I need to go visit New York. Mm. I fuck with cold weather. You can always wear like wear cooler fits. Yeah, that's true. That's true. One thing, one thing about England too, right? Like the houses don't have air conditioning, so when it's what? when it is warm, it's like, yeah, that, <laughs> it's that's like the worst thing what? ever. What? Like it's the worst yeah. thing ever. I can only imagine, bro. Yeah. Um, what's the best thing about living in California? Um, probably the people you can meet and how many people travel out here that are just like known and shit. Like a lot of like a lot mm. of people that I meet online. Or like, yo, I'm in LA, or I'm about to go to LA, or I just left LA. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, damn. Yeah. like, it's kind of like a hot spot, you know? So if you really want to make some connections, go and post up with somebody, make a song or some shit, or just smoke a blunt, whatever the fuck niggas do. <laughs> yeah. uh, what's the worst thing about living in California? 
honestly, I can't. I think I would have to say the way people dress. People dress so ass out here. Really? But, <laughs> yeah. I never, I never really paid attention to how people dress until recently. I guess until I uh, tried to figure out my own sense of fashion. But uh, the way people dress out here is pretty bad. The weather is pretty bad. Some of the cultures out here, like not like, not like. Hold on, some of the cultures is in like uh, the shitty shit people believe. Not like religions or anything like that. Like I don't mind. Like you can believe whatever you want. But I mean, like just like some like the the male toxicity cultures or like the femininity, the feminine toxicity or whatever the fuck like that. Those mm -hmm. type of cultures. Is California like culturally diverse or is it like well not no no I'm sure it is but like is it is it like segregated? Is it like the white people are there, the black people are there, the Mexicans are there, or is it like everyone's like mixed together? It used to be like that. It used to be pretty like uh. Like you could walk a certain block and you would know that that's like the niggas block, or you could walk a certain block and you would know that that's like the white people block or whatever. Um, but now, honestly, people are definitely like integrating. You're seeing like interracial relationships, which is like beautiful and shit like that. You're seeing people like taking people from other blocks or whatever. It's not as segregated as it is. I think some places are still like kind of, they still kind of like believe in their block to block to block. <laughs> but a lot, of, yeah. a lot of people have just kind of integrated. How old are you when you first started making music? Uh, I was 17, about to turn 18. Only been doing music for like two years. Yeah, that's Maybe crazy. Two and a half years. Yeah, thank you. And but, um, huh? go no, no, go ahead. Uh, I had always, like, I've always been a music listener, music appreciator, music divulger, you know, but... <laughs> My friend David, he had uh, he made like a song. I remember we were back on Xbox. It's when we play Xbox every day. We were gamers before we made music. So he made a song and everybody fucking clowned him, bro. We was like, damn, this shit. Like, it was a good song, first off. I need to preface this by saying it was a good song. It was a very catchy song. <laughs> but everybody everybody was like shitting. He's like, nigga, what are you doing? Like, making music? Like, this shit's like, what, what are you doing? We were like 17, like, just dogging him for no reason. Then I was like, damn, I wonder how hard it is to make music. <laughs> I got a computer. We got a computer like uh, this summer of 2020. I started streaming a little bit. And then I started getting in like FL and shit. And that's when I found out about hyper pop and just like all those people that I had looked up to that I don't really look up to anymore. And they're kind of, you know, when you when you get to know somebody, it kind of it kind of ruins the kind of ruins like the the picture you had of them in your head, you know. But uh, I got into hyper pop. Got into making a lot of friends. Got into making music and shit. And then I've been doing that for about two years. Hmm. And do you play any instruments? Yeah, I'm learning guitar. It's back there. Hmm. Can't really see it. Learning guitar. I've been playing that for about uh, four or five months. Something on and off. I want to learn some more though. Was there any artist, could be mainstream, um, in the scene, whichever, that influenced you when you started? Yeah, definitely. I had um. There's a lot of artists that I took took uh, positions from lyrically, which were like lyrically, I'd say like maybe like The Weeknd or Frank Ocean or just like a lot of these artists that I listened to that had great metaphors, and great like lyrical talent and their ability to like put themselves out there in an unapologetic way. And then I have like my friends who also inspired me like cadence and like flow and shit like that, which is like David. Uh, I listen to Glaive a lot when I'm back when I first started. I listen to Eric Doe a lot back when I first started. They're they were really good. They still are. Um what else? I looked up to Kuru Heavy. Um, who else? Damn, a lot of these people were just like so good, but it's like it feels like a year ago. Os Quinn. The Os Quinn, I listen to her a lot. Um just a whole bunch of people, honestly. Hmm. But yeah. I'm really interested about your recording process because I feel like your music isn't like anyone else's in the scene i feel like it was pretty unique Thank in that you. sense so can you tell me everything about that yeah of course uh my recording process is actually super simple i will take this mic and then i'll take a beat or maybe i've been i've been starting to produce a little bit lately so maybe i'll make a beat maybe i'll take a loop and just throw some drums on that shit. uh but i'll take a beat i will sometimes i'll write beforehand to like get a gist of what the fuck I want to say if I have like a guideline for the song. And I will just start talking in a mic and it'll take me a lot of tries 
or whatever because I want it to be authentic, but I don't want it to be bad, you know? Because sometimes mm -hmm. authentic, you can get repetitive and just like shit like that. So I'll give it a little variation where I can uh, up my pitch a little bit where I want to. And I can, bear the reason people think that I intentionally like don't mix my songs, <laughs> I can't fucking mix. I just recently <laughs> learned how to mix. Like Irish Color Coffee was probably like the best mix job I've done. And thankfully my voice doesn't need a lot of vocal processing. So I just kind of lightly mix them or I'll have, I'll get pointers from somebody or I'll ha I had one song where I had somebody else mix it, my homie Bugs, uh, that was Beano. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I have very, very light recording process. I'll go back in and I'll do a bunch of harmonies. And I don't know if other people do this, but once I, once I upload a song to SoundCloud, I'll probably take it back down and just like <laughs> do some more vocal layering and then put it back up. <laughs> people won't even notice, but it's just like, it's like a new thing. I'm like, this doesn't sound finished yet. And what part would you say takes the longest in your process? Definitely the writing, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Like writing, sometimes songs can come to me easy as fuck, or sometimes they can take like a week. But uh, either way, the writing is always going to take the longest because I feel like uh, the way that I talk, it doesn't vary too much in my songs or it doesn't vary too much from what I want. Uh, but like when I'm writing, I don't know if I want to tell a story, talk about the argument I had with my mom that morning or talk about just something that doesn't even exist to me. So mm. it uh, and once I do, I'll figure out metaphors and similes and antonyms and prefixes and shit and just things to make it like not sound like uh, boring, you know, but still mm. give it a soul. And that always takes the longest. And do you have a preference between vocals or production? I know you said your early production, but. Would you say you have a preference? Honestly, production. I think producing has my heart, but I, I can't really say. I can't really say yet. Like I haven't. I'm not too good of a producer yet. But I, I'd say vocals are still up there, just because um, people just compliment me all the time my writing and shit, and it feels good to be accepted in something that you know I never thought I would really be accepted in, even with such a small following or whatever. Mm. So I think I think I'll say vocals for now, but production has my heart. And have you sent anyone beats yet? No, absolutely not. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. So soon. What's what's your favorite song you've made so far and why? Damn, favorite song I've made so far. Uh um, I guess I guess honorable mention I would say 19ism because that was like the first taste of like people that I didn't even know like reaching out like yo this shit's hard like this is a banger or whatever the fuck and that shit felt mm -hmm. great um but I guess I think I would say Irish Kelly Coffee because it was such a personal song and um this is me talking about how I lost my best friend over those fake allegations and shit like that uh, my best friend for like six years, like my high school homie, like that was like my brother, you know, and that shit definitely hit me uh, in a couple ways. I like cried, I, I cut my losses or whatever, but like the first, the first couple of lines, like home is where the heart is until it lies at the door and fire eats the floor of a place that I slept at. Like that was just like me kind of realizing how fast everything can be taken away from me, mm -hmm. even uh, in re even if it's not true, you know, mm -hmm. but. It was me. It was just me coming to terms with the. Uh, I need to keep going, you know. Yeah. And in my opinion, I know you spoke on just. In my opinion, you have the best songwriting in the whole scene. Easily, thank you so like much. easily, like it's so fun. So much appreciation. I love that. I <laughs> thank you for that so much. You always, you always supported me, bro, and I love that shit. That's why I'm like, you gotta get something done. The yeah, energy thanks. is there. Yeah, and the work. Your writing process, so do you, is it always different or do you always approach it in the same kind of way? Uh, I try to keep it fresh. I try to keep it different for like myself and like uh, for the sake of the song because there was a lot of times, um, oh, Delete Zeke was like a big influence to me after they dropped Teen Week and then um, we're leading into the second LP, which I forgot the name of, but their songwriting was pretty good. It was like, uh, it was like, fuck, what's the name of it? I'm completely blanking right now, but it was, they had very good songwriting, I would say. And I would kind of like take it and I'd read it and I would, uh, 
and I would I would kind of implement it into mine, and then I would change some words to where it's not like, to where I'm not biting too hard, and I still had it relating to me, and um, sometimes a lot of, a lot of the times like I'll listen to a song and then I'll start writing a song, and I think that mm-hmm. that helps to keep it fresh or like help me keep from approaching it the same way every time, you know. Yeah, I feel that. Is do you have? Do you have maybe a preference or is one easier than the other when you write from your experiences compared to maybe a made up scenario or someone else's experiences? Um, I find it easier when I'm writing from my own experiences because I find storytelling for me to be pretty, pretty crucial. Like if I'm storytelling, I want it to be good. I don't want to miss out like any details. Like I was writing a song earlier and I was talking about like how kind of when you're creeping on a house, like you walk up to the front door, you look in, you walk around, look in the side doors, the basement, <laughs> shit like that, you know? And it's just like, you want it to feel real, or at least if you want to close your eyes, then you can kind of like really visualize what I'm saying in the lyrics and it seems coherent and shit like that. Mm. Um, but when I'm writing from personal experience, it's like everything isn't always coherent and I don't have to worry about that. You can feel everything at once or nothing at once or just jumble it up and fucking fix it, figure out what I want to say. Yeah. have you ever thought about being a songwriter for other people oh yeah actually there's people that have ghostwritten for that i'm not really allowed to talk about but uh <laughs> yeah I've, I've always i've always thought about that and i've seen it's like a lot of people get their starts you know and it's good money too it's great money yeah facts is there any songwriting advice secrets or tips that you could share maybe hmm I don't know if it's just for me, but I think one of the biggest ones is trying to stay true to yourself, no matter in what sense that may be writing. And not staying true to yourself doesn't necessarily mean talking true or like everything has to happen to you has to be necessarily true. Just keep it true to yourself. Like, is this really what what you want to say, or are you trying to appeal to some niggas that won't give a fuck? You know, mm. so you could be talking about like how you hate this fucking coffee or whatever just make it sound true to yourself like do you really fuck with this coffee or whatever it's just like some pointless shit like yeah just stay true to yourself and whatever you're writing and how planned out are your releases do you have like specific time you want to drop in between releases is it like or is it just random it definitely depends, but most of the time, no planning goes into what the <laughs> fuck I'm making. Yeah, like, no planning at all. No, usually planning doesn't go when I'm dropping, when I'm making music. Like, the song I just dropped, made that, like, two hours. I woke up, I was like, okay, I need to make a song so I can feel accomplished before I go play Apex all day. So I did that and uh, dropped that, and I was pretty happy with it. I think, honestly, in all the songs that I've made, I've probably, like, started them right before I dropped them. You know, Mm-mm. yeah, no, no planning. And how no long? How long would you say it takes from start for you to finish the song, writing oh. vocals, everything? It depends. I'd say uh, in my longest song, which might have been Nineteenism. I think I have that right. Yeah, in my longest song, which was Nineteenism, for sure, it took about twenty hours. So like, it never takes me a long time really to 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 start a song and finish it. But mm. twenty hours was a doozy. You know, I had to come, I had to take a break, and come back, come to college, <laughs> take a break, play yeah. some video games, or whatever. Yeah, and um, uh, in Irish Color Coffee, that only took about two and a half hours. But that's just like seeing like two and a half hours translate to one verse, and then like just like some <laughs> outro. It's just like goddamn, but it feels good. It always feels good. Mm. <coughs> what was the inspiration behind your name? Um, my first name is Jeremiah, my last name is Dickens, and all my family call me JD, which is just a great name. Uh, I didn't really fuck with it at first, I was like, I was like, you guys call me Jeremiah? I didn't like them as much either. I like both my names now, but I think JD mm-hmm. fits me. Very easy, very simple name. Do you ever maybe regret picking that name because it's so hard to, like, search? Oh yeah, I'd be thinking about that all the time. I had there's some early times in my stage or like early times in my music career where I had like JD two K or JD zeros and ones after like a whole bunch of JD shit. Then I was just like, honestly, I'm still I'm still at like fucking 30, 40 followers. Nobody's gonna find me right now anyway. 
if they're mm-hmm. figuring me out, they'll figure me out. But there's some fucking, there's some Nigerian motherfucker with the name JD on SoundCloud who's <laughs> verified. I know I'm going to have to fight him <laughs> one day. Like, one day me and him are going to have to test. So I'm going to be like, I'm the JD, bro, not you making fucking trill step. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, why do you have, as far as I'm aware, why do you have no songs on Spotify? Um, <laughs> the real answer is me being fucking lazy. I keep on saying I'm going to do it, and I don't do it. But um, I'm gonna do it after this. I just got paid, so I'm gonna do it after this. Like literally after this, I'm gonna go upload everything and um, try to get them done. I just I just know, or I don't know. I feel like once I put them on SoundCloud, not a lot of people will listen to them. But maybe that's I feel like that's also not a valid excuse because like I don't have a lot of fans and or a lot of supporters in the first place. But the people that listen to it mean the fucking world for me. So I'm just gonna put it up for the people that need it or people that want it. You know. Mm. And your cover arts, are they all just pictures you've taken? Yeah, I think pretty much. Uh, I'm about to go look right now. Do you My, do you take uh, them specifically for a song, or do you just take them just to take them kind of thing? No, I try. I kind of see which one fits. Uh, here, I'll scroll this one real quick. Hmm. But I think I think some of them some of them have cool stories behind them, like um, Irish Colored Coffee. This one was when I was in LA. I was having a really rough time, so I got to LA to escape. Um, I took this one. This one is a picture for my friend Paul's bedroom, my old uh, guidance counselor that's now my friend. This one is his cassettes. Uh, this one is when I hung out with my homie Bugs and stuff. This one was taken by my friend Jam. Uh, this is a pretty cool song. It's like a coon. And it's just oh, a very shit, nice yeah. picture. Yeah. yeah, right? And uh, the rest of them, the rest of these are just pretty much pictures I've taken. Yeah, I think the rest of them are all pictures. This one was taken of me, actually. We were doing drugs here. I won't say which ones but <laughs> and, uh, yeah, i think it's about it this is my first song i won't play that but <laughs> yeah, man. um yeah so how did you get connected with heaven is that how you pronounce her name heaven is that right yeah yeah so i think so uh how did i meet larry Heaven, uh, first off, shout out Heaven. That's one of my favorite per- people to work with or talk to whenever he slides in my VC. He's a great fucking person. Just like uh, his, work eth- his work ethic is off the charts. And when he knows he wants something, he will work on that shit uh, from beginning to end. I'll text him for a beat and he'll be like, yeah, I'm gonna work on it today. And he'll, I won't even text him again. And he'll be like, yeah, that shit's done like three days later when I done forgot about the beat. <laughs> um, but let's see. I met Heaven, I'd like to say through my friend Parker, Parker is Rage. Um, a lot of people may know him. He's a great guy as well. But, uh, damn, yeah, I think like back in the old days, I used to hang in the Phantom Troop server, which allowed me to meet a lot of people like Kite, uh, fuck, like Kite, Die and Respawn, Tyga Cam, whole bunch of cool motherfuckers that was like, this is like, that was like my first home. And, um, I branched out and I got to meet a lot of other people in the scene, like Heaven and um, Fangs and just like oh, all these cool people, you know? It was was that all around the same time that you met everyone? No, I met everybody gradually, actually. Like, I'd been in VCs with these people and I was lucky geeking out. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I would be in, like, VC with, like, Kuru and shit and I'd be trying to play it cool because I'm like, I listen to this motherfucker. <laughs> and, I, and, you know, I don't want to wanna be that motherfucker that was, like, on dick in VC. I'm like, dude. Everybody, everybody, also, everybody, like, in the scene, they're not the type of people to clown you in VC. Like, they will, like, they will wait until you leave and then talk shit about you. That's <laughs> one of those things I never really liked. So I would be like, you know, I'd be, I'd be chilling. And I'd be like, damn, was that, like, the actual Kuru? And they'd be like, yo, you're fanboying right now. And I'd be like, yeah, a little bit. That shit was fire. And um, I met everybody gradually. Like, it took me a while to make connections with these people. And uh, they actually knew me and my homie David from, like, because we, we were video gamers first. And also, everybody in the SoundCloud scene sucks so much dick at video games. They're so bad, but they're so fun to play with. But <laughs> me and my homie David, we sweat. Like, we sweat our ass. Like, we will be screaming call-outs and obscenities and shit. And they'll be like, they'll know us from, like, playing video games or whatever. We'll be really good. And that's just mm-hmm. always cool. And that helped me meet a lot of people. I think me and, I think I met Heaven uh, from playing a lot of video games. I met some other cool people from playing video games, too. Uh, like, oh, Avast, too. Shout out Avast. That's my bro. How long was it from when you started making music to making those kind of connections? Um, it didn't take too long, actually. I was making music. I had a good 
I had a lot of good known people in the scene that were helping me. My third song was actually produced by Delete Zeke, which was pretty cool. Uh, I just texted them and I was like, yo, can I get a beat? And they sent me, they sent me a beat and I texted them again. I was like, what about something more break chorus? And they did it. And then I made a song in like 30 seconds and it got like good traction. It had Prod Delete Zeke in the title. Like a lot of people were like, yo, mm-hmm. this guy's kind of, yeah, it's good. that was when I was working on my lyrics too, but I had good lyrics in that song too, even though it's a little bad. But then a lot of people started reaching out and they started following me and shit like that. And it felt cool. Mm-hmm. And why do you think there's always so much drama in the scene? Man, uh, first off, the fucking job rate in the scene is like non-existent. None of these motherfuckers have jobs. <laughs> <laughs> That's just me. That's just me like pulling shit apart. Uh, I think if a lot of people, I think if a lot of people in the scene were less bored and were more in tune with what they liked instead of what they didn't like, there wouldn't be as much drama. Because, like, I've seen a lot of people talk about people that they don't like for hours on the BC. I'll be like, shut the fuck up. Like, why are you? Let's go make a song or something, you know? Let's not let's not rag on this dude who you don't like, I don't care for, and hasn't done really anything to us, you know? Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't really think like that. They'll uh, they'll just sit there and they'll gossip for however long until they get bored. And then they'll be like, all right, guys, have a good day. And then they'll fucking log back into BC tomorrow. And then they'll start gossiping again. I'll be like, you know, it's kind of, you got to get a life. I love that answer. So that's that's the best answer to that question I've had for sure. Thank you. Um, are you in any collectives, or have you been in any collectives? Um, no, actually, I wanted to join Bloodhounds for a little bit. Um, I thought Bloodhounds was such a great collective. It was. It was a great collective. My friend Brendan did all that shit. Like FNS, he's a fucking legend, mm-hmm. and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't ever want to hear anybody say it. anything other than that. But I did want to join Bloodhounds for a little bit before they left. Um. I thought Grave Mind was really cool too, but I have bad blood with pretty much everybody in that collective. Uh, and I think that's about it. That's about it. I wasn't ever in any, in any collectives. So, because you're not in any, what are your opinions on them? Do you think they're good? Do you think they're bad? I think they're great. I think collectives are a great way for to just have a team behind your back and feel secure in what the fuck you're making. And I see a lot of people be like, dude, there's too many collectives or there's too many uh, people make collectives out the woodworks or whatever. What's wrong with having a friend group, you know? <laughs> like, who doesn't, who doesn't want a friend group? Why are you trying to gatekeep friend group? Yeah. And what's your opinion on Hyperpop? Hyperpop? I love it. I think Hyperpop is great. I, I just, I just, I mean, like, the scene is also really young. That's probably another contributor to drama, but... Uh, with the scene being young, all it takes is one person to be like, I fucking hate hyperpop for everybody else to be like, I fucking hate hyperpop, especially if somebody has a following or is at the top, then they hate that shit. Uh, honestly, for me, it depends on what type of hyperpop, like the old, that old shit that like, uh, like Glaive and Kuru and Twikipedia and like Lou and all the motherfuckers are making, that shit was so hard. It caught my ear like the second I listened to it. I put like all my other old friends onto it. They're like 19 and shit and they're like yo this shit's hard as hell and i'm like i know right <laughs> i'm like these motherfuckers are like 16 15 14 making this shit they'd be like what i'm like yeah and what genre would you say you make personally that's a good question um i really don't know i really don't know i think if people ask me somebody asked me that today when i was getting my heart my haircut my barber asked me that shit and i was like i don't even know bro but uh I have no clue. I would say, if I had to compare it to something, I would say it's closer to like, uh, like the Frank Ocean, and maybe like, maybe like sometimes rock, or like Alex G, or shit like that. Mm. I just, I just don't know the actual name for those genres. Do you have any songs like rapping, 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 like, uh, like ignorant rapping? uh yeah fuck it yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i have like i have like one prod rap i don't know if you heard it actually it was like a pretty it was like a pretty good song um i have a couple like i haven't released probably won't release mm-hmm. but i always i'm always getting better at rapping so um so like over time uh i'll probably do i'll probably, I'll probably do some more and probably push them out but i do is like i do love rapping though like rapping is fire as fuck like i remember uh <laughs> This dude put me on like a list of rappers I could beat up. And I was like, <laughs> yo, I'm like, what the fuck? I'm number eight, by the way. He can definitely serve my ass, but it's whatever. Um, 
And I remember I, I posted on my story, some dude was like, you're not a rapper. He swiped up, he's like, you're not a rapper. And I'm like, motherfucker, yes, I can do that. Like, I can rap, come on now. Don't try to like make me categorize myself. I personally don't give a fuck what you call me. Just being an artist is enough and mm -hmm. rapping for those under artists. So uh, mm -hmm. I, 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 do, I do think that I can rap pretty well, but I do need some more rap tracks. What do you think to TikTok? TikTok. Um, let's see. I think it is a double-edged sword. It can be used for so much good, but there's so much mm. evil on that app. Who like, okay, what do you what happens when you put an app with so much exposure in hands of just a whole bunch of people going through puberty? <laughs> just so much <laughs> bad shit. It's like it's so yeah. you got you got like the terrible relationship advice. You got like uh the fucking boys versus girls war you got like all that shit you know that you see on tiktok and then you got all the good shit though you got like the people that blow up off of music and you got the people that like uh that are telling you like mental health tips like the non-toxic ones or whatever and the people that wish you a good day and the people that are breaking down but are just looking for a friend and they find a friend on tiktok there's just a whole bunch of good and bad shit on that app but honestly bro like i'm really appreciative for it i've seen a lot of people get their like kickstarts from tiktok I've seen some of my friends' songs blow up on TikTok, which is a cool feeling. Uh, and that shit's great. What do you think about it? I'm curious. Um, I think... What do I think? <laughs> I think it's pretty toxic. I don't have it, but I'm just going from like what I know. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't even have the app or nothing, but I think it's kind of toxic. And I think there is a lot of... Um, attention seeking is that the right term oh, to use yeah. like it seems to be quite quite a lot of that mm -hmm. from from the outside looking in anyway and i think yeah i think yeah it's made everyone i feel like everyone says this but i feel like it is so true it's made everyone's like attention span so short like because the content is so short it's like people just want like instant like it's like now, even like myself, like, say you're watching like a YouTube video and it buffers for like two seconds. You're like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, like, <laughs> no, that's facts. That's facts. Yeah. That's something I had to realize too. Yeah. I've been making these long ass songs. Like I've been making like ballads and shit. I'd be having to be like, dude, nobody wants to sit through that. <laughs> you know? I'd be, I'd be catching myself listening to like old Frank Ocean songs from like Nostalgia Ultra and shit. I'd be mm -hmm. like, damn, six minutes? What the <laughs> fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah. For real, for real. <laughs> But yeah, I think it's um, yeah, like you said, perfect is double edged sword. It's like, it's so, it could be so good, but then it also can be just so bad. But no facts. Yeah. Perfect. So, what video games do you sweat on? I uh, see. Recently, it's been a real Apex grind. I don't really fuck with Apex, but I've been playing a lot of Apex. I have got like. 200 hours in the last like two weeks or whatever i've been busting my ass oh my god uh, right before that it was fortnite um i play pretty much anything i get my hands on oh I, back in the day I used to be a big call of duty player big big toxic motherfucker so mm. you kind of see me like you kind of see me like channel some of that and like maybe some of my lyrics or whatever or i'm able to like uh make a conversation seem real where i'm talking to myself or whatever it's just like I get rem reminiscent of like me talking to people in the headset or whatever. And what do you think to the no build mode on Fortnite? I haven't played it. I haven't played it. Really? I'm a builder, man. I'm a builder. <laughs> <laughs> um, name me, name me the top three core duties of all time. Fuck of all time. All right, this is about to be controversial. Is <laughs> um. All right, so look, we got BO2. I got to play it safe. BO2, I think is at the top. Then after that, COD Ghosts. Okay, I'm fuck. No, hear me out. <laughs> hear me out. I fucked with Ghost so heavy, bro. I was oh the my head god! Head. I love Extinction. I know, bro. I love Extinction. I love Ghost. I love the fucking knifing from thirty meters away, bro. That shit was good. And then, um, and then after that, I would probably say Bo3. Honestly, I really fucked with Bo3. We had like the specialists and shit. They were trying something new. You could see your feet. That was like next level shit. Whole bunch of fucking lore happened around us. I remember Team Martin got caught for scamming and shit. <laughs> shit was going on, bro. Yeah, was wild. But I think that's it. Yeah. I'm like a big, big Call of Duty guy. So, um, really, really? Yeah. yeah that's fire. Yeah. Fuck. I love that. We got we to gotta get some games down. We, we get the studio or some shit. Yeah. Fact. Be so 
Uh, yeah. What do you think to the jetpacks in Call of Duty? I know you said you like BO3, but like as a whole, the Advanced Warfare, Infinite Warfare, what do you think? Depended on the game, because every game did it different. Like mm. Infinite Warfare was ass, Advanced Warfare, I like the dashing to the left and the right, but other than that, I didn't really fuck with it. Um, BO3, I think, did it the best. But I, yeah, it was a fact. short-lived... It was a short-lived jetpack thing. Like, yeah. We thought that was, was going to be around forever. What do you think about... Because I'm a big Call of Duty guy, but I think Warzone is terrible. What do you think to Warzone? No, I don't fuck with Warzone. I hate either, it bro. so much. I hate I it so I'd much. I'd be like, dude, can we just go back to the other shit? Because Warzone is um, not my shit. No. I, like, you're sitting around forever. You're fucking... Don't walk around or else you're getting sniped in the head by no. some fucko in a bush. Like, bro, it's just not a very fun game mode. Yeah, fact. What was uh what were some games you was playing when you was like younger? When we were younger, uh Damn, I used to play a lot of Mario, I used to play a lot of Zelda, I used to play a lot of I think like Ocarina of Time, I had hella hours in that game, like trying to do everything, trying to go to Goron and get the Goron sword and shit. <laughs> um I was playing like anything I could get my hands on, a lot of Pac-Man, a lot of Mortal Kombat. Uh a lot of these games I play with my cousin Monte, bro. We was we was just we was we was the biggest nerds ever. We still we've been <laughs> playing video games together for like maybe what the fuck like fourteen years, bro. Damn. And we're still yeah we're still logging in on Discord, making like silly ass jokes, playing this playing music and whatever. Yeah, that's really my goat, for real. What are your plans for twenty twenty two? Any music videos, albums, shows? Could be anything. I think for 2022, I definitely want to just keep going forward with music. I'm going to start putting myself out there on like other platforms like TikTok and shit. Because a lot of people tell me like, put your music on TikTok. Like some of my songs are really accessible and I've started to realize that. But um, I haven't really put in like the work. And also uh, I have like a kind of a marketable face. Like um, people think that I'm attractive and stuff. So if I put like a song and it's a good song, they'll be like, oh, wow, this makes, he makes good music. You know, like, let me go check this out. I've seen it happen with other people, and I think I want to start capitalizing on that. Um, I do want to do some music videos. I've met so many cool, talented people with cameras recently. I've been wanting to get my own camera, but I don't know if I have the time or like. Also, that shit's like mad expensive, like eight hundred bucks. That's a monthly paycheck. Yeah, yeah. But um, I want to get some music videos done. I want to meet a lot of people. Definitely want to meet you, my bros. Fire. I want to meet a couple other people, and uh, travel. That's about it. Mm. What what are your opinions on signing to a label? Signing to a label. I think that... Honestly, a lot of people be talking about not signing, and that's, like, pretty re unrealistic. But now that I think about it, you can kind of push yourself. Like, you have, like, a lot of tools to really, like, put yourself out there with no signing. It just mm -hmm. depends on where you're marketing and who you're marketing to and what you're marketing as, you know? But I think that signing to a label itself is pretty, like fucked up like depending off of what i've seen i don't even know mm -hmm. if it's true or not but just like i've seen people get fucked over by labels i've seen people's music decrease a lot because they have to put out so much and it's just like i think like a lot of people i think one of the people that i think gets a lot of shit too is like glaive and glaive mm -hmm. signed and he like puts out he puts out music and he like does he did i remember he did a live with mgk or whatever and a lot of people were like on <laughs> his dick and now they're like yo glaive sold out glaive so Yo, like, do you guys understand? Like, when is the, okay? When is the last time you made a song that wasn't for the end goal of being able to sustain off your own music? I don't even think mm. people can tell me that. You know, yeah. like, when is the last time you haven't had that in like the back of your head? Like, damn, this shit's nice. I'm really getting better at music. Maybe one day I'll blow up. You know, mm. and a lot of people, you know, a lot of people like to cap. They like to be like, I've never done that. Like, oh, okay, <laughs> you're just making music. <laughs> you're like, like, of course, there's like a personal thing in there, but come on, bro. I yeah. think I think selling out I think selling out like is it the wave, but I understand needing to pay your bills or wanting to not be broke anymore, you know. Hmm. Where do you see yourself five years from now? Uh, hopefully, self-sustaining off of something music-related. Uh, hopefully, being a better person, in different fall in different fronts, um, alive. <laughs> yeah, I can always say that. So that's a good. Uh. I think that's I think that's about it. Pretty broad, leave pretty broad. Is there anything else you'd like to mention to tell people that maybe I didn't ask? Um, 
I think, I think uh, we should all try to be kinder to each other. I think a lot of people have just Facts. been running off a lot of like, yeah, a lot of people have just been running off a lot of like hatred and just what the fuck they don't like and just annoying people or just being a nuisance when like, honestly, being kinder, like being able to just crack a smile at somebody and talk about what you're passionate about and shit like that. It might be a little harder because like, yeah, you might have like traumas or like just be embarrassed of liking shit. But bro, it's not that bad. Like it makes you feel good. It gives you something more positive to talk about. And um, shout out to all my homies, all my people that's been supporting me in like this hard ass time or even supporting me before that shit or even people that don't support me anymore. Uh, every like swipe up, every like, every play, every repost, every anything, every ear I'm lent, every eye I'm lent. It means the world to me. So thank you for making me feel welcome in making music and being an artist and shit like that. And thank you as well. Thank you. Um, I have one final question. Okay. So you can travel forward or backwards in time. You can go to any point in time. You could go back. If you wanted to see the dinosaurs, you could go back to World War II. You could go forward a hundred years where would you go and why all right this is about to get mad corny i would go back in time and i would talk to juice world because that's low-key <laughs> one of my inspos bro. i fucked him heavy and i'll be watching some of his old i'll be watching some of his old music videos and be getting like a little emotional shit i'll be like damn this nigga's dead as fuck and uh i mean i have a, i have a little bit of a drug problem too so i'd be like uh watching this shit and i'm like damn bro this nigga is crazy and um yeah i think that i think that would be it i wouldn't really change anything else though because i like the way my life is right now and i don't like spoilers so. hmm. i guess i'll add another question in. uh name me name me your top three juice world songs oh shit all right we got we got autograph for sure autograph on my line that's hard uh we got rockstar girl um, coke in her nose ring, Molly in her nails. That shit's hard as fuck. Mm-hmm. Then what? I think I gotta go with like. I'm still on goodbye and good riddance. Those are like top three, mm-hmm. like real screamers. What's the best use for project? Uh, definitely goodbye and good riddance. I think nigga slid mm-hmm. on that whole album. Hey, so I appreciate you coming on and doing the interview. Um, Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm happy that you got to say your piece. And uh, everyone that hasn't listened to your music, I definitely recommend listen to his music because especially the songwriting is like just different. Thank for you. Real. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Uh, if you do go check out my music, I appreciate it. Say you're from Virus. Shout out Virus. Shout out Heroin Diaries, Iguana, whatever the <laughs> fuck your name is. What do you go by? What do you go by? I go by I go by anything anything okay bet. <laughs> bet, bet, bet. But, um, no, yeah. yeah i appreciate shout it out, shout out brother of course i appreciate you as well thank you for giving me the time of day of course